But first I want the reaction of Roy Ram, who is a former commander of Specialist Operations at Scotland Yard. Uh, Roy, you've been involved in a lot of these kind of operations. Sigh of relief all round. Presumably uh, some uh, thanks or, or at least a welcome to the Prime Minister and the Policing Minister thanking people for this operation. But there will have been an incredible amount of work by something like 150 officers over the past four days to apprehend Daniel Khalif. So just tell us your reaction. I'm delighted for the Met. I think it demonstrates what uh, can be achieved between the public and the police when there's cooperation, when there's a clear understanding of what needs to be done. The Met obviously threw resources at it, uh, as it should have done, uh, and it, it appears that this man did not have the kind of state-sponsored help that was being speculated about. Yes, he got out of prison, but he didn't get terribly far. And it would it would appear from what we know so far that he's probably been sleeping rough and, and did not get very far away from the prison from which he escaped. I think that raises all kinds of questions for the prison service uh, about how easy it was uh, for somebody without really, really uh, state-sponsored help to get out of a prison in that way. But uh, it's a great morning for the Met. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. It is interesting, isn't it, Roy, that we have had that speculation that there were perhaps links to Iran. We know from his family, and I'll bring Duncan on the, in on this in a minute, that uh, there were various links to Iran, although his family certainly uh, are not uh, supporters of the Iranian regime. But as you say, he didn't get very far. We'd had those uh, searches of uh, in Richmond and South West London, but he didn't even get that far. He got to Chiswick in West London, which is, uh, I mean, just to put it in context for the 82% of our viewers and listeners who aren't in, in London and perhaps don't know Chiswick, I mean, the, the distance from Wandsworth Prison, we're not talking a huge, we're talking, what, a couple of miles maybe? Really not far at all. Yeah, exactly. And, and if this had been a well-resourced state-sponsored plan, what we would have expected is pretty well as soon as he was out uh, from underneath the vehicle in which he escaped, uh, there would have been a mechanism in place to meet him, pick him up, take him to a safe house, give him a change of clothing, if not get him out of the country immediately, but to, to hold him until that opportunity arose. And, and clearly that's not happened. So, you know, on the one hand, that's really good news. But on the other, it, as I say, it raises all kinds of questions about the phys physical security at Wandsworth uh, or lack of it that allowed somebody with limited support to escape so easily. Uh, I think quite clearly he will not be returned to Wandsworth. I, I, I expect he'll be returned to a Cat A prison, which is probably where he should have been in the first place. That's right. There were reports that he was in Belmarsh at one stage, but I actually checked with the Ministry of Justice yesterday and he was never in Belmarsh, apparently. That was misreported. So I, I would imagine he'll probably go there now. I've been actually been behind the walls of Belmarsh. I, I used to work for the Ministry of Justice as a special advisor to the Justice Secretary many moons ago, and that was somewhere that I, I have been. And that's where, uh, as you will know, Roy, the vast majority of terror suspects and, and people who've con been convicted of terror alerts, uh, terror uh, uh, crimes have been. And actually, uh, Duncan, you know Belmarsh, I'm sure, very well. Duncan Gardham, security analyst and expert in international terrorism. Many people will feel that's a more appropriate place, even though he hasn't been convicted of anything yet, this terror suspect, uh, Daniel Khalif, to be in Belmarsh. What do you make of that, Duncan? And how likely do you think it'll be that he will be returned there and not to Wandsworth? Uh, Wandsworth, it's not a Category A prison, although it does uh, handle a, a series of, um, or has over the years handled a series of high-profile uh, offenders and has um, pretty tight security anyway. But um, Belmarsh would be a likely option. Uh, the high-security estate is wider than that and in involves uh, a, a number of other prisons around the country, which are also options. Of course, Belmarsh is directly next door to the court that he was due to uh, face trial in, in in November at Woolwich Crown Court, uh, which was specifically dealt uh, built to deal with prisoners from Belmarsh. So it would make sense. I think there is some uh, argument about why he wasn't made uh, a Category A in the first place. His terrorism offence is the fake device rather than a real device. Um, the fact that it sounds uh, unlikely that he actually passed any secrets probably pushed him down 
the category list, but he was um, considered a flight risk uh, uh, at the time of his uh, first appearances in court. Uh, and uh, that should have perhaps have played into the prison authorities um, assessment of him uh, as uh, he uh, was. Let, let, me, let me ask you a little bit more about that Duncan because in your judgment you're someone who's been around this for a long time uh, you know security back to front you know terror back to front you know home affairs back to front should he have been in Wandsworth in the first place? It it, honestly, it doesn't surprise me that he was in Wandsworth, given the uh, level of his offending. Uh, I think what, what we don't really know is the level of detail that prosecutors were able to go into in terms of whether uh, Khalif was able to access um, individuals to get him out of the country. And it turns out he didn't have access to those anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the, the danger, as it turns out, was that he was a kind of... Um, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, you know, to, to try and escape from prison with only half a plan about what you're going to do on the other side yeah. suggests that he's kind of slightly living in a, dare I say, a slight fantasy land because, you know, he, you know, a sensible thinking person would, would think, you know, I'm not going to get far unless I've got a proper plan here or at least some money that will enable me to get places. He would have known, I think, the... Uh, dangers are popping up on the security system. He will have been trying to avoid CCTV cameras because he's Royal Signals. He will have been trying to avoid using mobile phones, uh, money and all the things that make him traceable. And I think that probably is why he hasn't actually got very far from where he started. And, and it's interesting you mentioned that. Um, my producer Chris has actually done the calculations on exactly how far he got. It's six miles. I thought it was a couple of miles. Actually six miles. We've got to remember, of course, in this session, as we always do, that the vast majority of our viewers and listeners don't live in London. Um, so Chiswick is, of course, in West London. Her Majesty's Prison, Wandsworth, also in West London, is six miles from uh, the centre of Chiswick in West London. So he only got six miles away. It would take him about two hours and 15 minutes to walk. Just before I come back to you, Duncan, I just want to read out a statement now from Yvette Cooper. She is the Shadow Home Secretary. I actually spoke to her uh, on Thursday morning on Talk TV as well. She said, thank you to all the police and intelligence teams involved in the search and arrest of Daniel Khalif. Very welcome news. He has now been caught. We now need answers about how on earth a prisoner charged with terror and national security offences could have escaped in this way. And those questions will remain, won't they, Duncan? They, they absolutely will remain about how he was able to secure a job in the kitchen. And again, that this seems to reflect uh, the fact that his offending wasn't taken very seriously by the prison or authorities. Or obviously all offending is taken seriously, but wasn't taken considered at the highest level uh, because that prison, that um, uh, kitchen is known to be a risk. Obviously, there are sharp implements in there. It's quite close to the exit of the prison, and only trusted prisoners really should be there. Even though uh, Khalif was on remand and had hadn't really had much time to prove himself because he'd only been uh, arrested earlier this year. So there'll be definite questions about the uh, categorisation, about the security at Wandsworth, about what we really know about the staffing of these prisons and we know that a lot of these prisons have uh were um uh asked to lay off staff during um during the uh, economic downturn a few years ago and have now have since struggled to recruit uh, extra staff that they need to really keep these prisons uh, running effectively, particularly the older ones, and Wandsworth is one of those Victorian prisons. Well, Duncan, I've been in three prisons in my time, and uh, I should say as someone visiting them rather than as an offender, and uh, it's fascinating because I went to Wormwood Scrubs, actually. I worked on a programme for a previous employer there. I was there about 10 years ago, and I was astonished at how freely the prisoners moved around. OK, they were secure, but there were particular prisoners we were trying to get. We were trying to get them to talk on a TV programme, they didn't sort of turn up for that, for, for the interviews and so on. And I said to the uh, the, the uh, prison officer, I said, where are these people? You know, you must know where they are. They said, well, they could, be, they could be in all sorts of places. We don't really know where they are. And I sort of thought, if this is a Category B prison, which was Wormwood Scrubs, similar, uh, same category as Wandsworth, there will be a lot of not quite free movement, but there will be a lot of movement from prisoners and whether it was appropriate for Daniel Khalif to be there will be a major, major part of this investigation. Yes, and it seems to be uh, the case that there was a, around 20 minutes between him, between the lorry leaving... Yeah, before they even noticed, yeah. 
and, and him being reported missing. And that, again, is a concern, whether that is down to collusion from his fellow inmates uh, or simply they no one noticed. And, and I think that's going to be, you know, a major part of uh, working out what went wrong here? Of, of course, prisoners can move around prisons. They can go to congregation areas. They can go to recreation areas. They're not locked up in their cells uh, 24 hours a day. In fact, if they were, uh, I think we'd really struggle with uh, what a rehabilitation sure. efforts that we make. And that's quite an important part of our prison service that kind of differs perhaps from, say, the harsher system in America is that we really do attempt to get prisoners on the straight and narrow with training schemes uh, and with uh, anti-drug uh, policies and de-radicalization in terms of terrorism. And that's it, it, it can't always work, but it's certainly uh, worth putting the effort into those things. But it does mean people are moving around to those various classes. And yeah. various and, 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 that, and, that, and that is a problem. There are many questions here. Mo has been in touch on Texas F from where did he get the straps? Uh, Craig in Durham says he should have been moved to Calgary a prison uh, uh, b before this uh, Leslie says typical to have someone on t talk criticising the government on what has been a great result I think he, uh, Leslie might be referring to our police guest earlier Peter um, well I mean look he, he welcomed certainly what the what the uh, government what Rishi Sunak and the policing minister has said but said look there are many problems within the police one man who knows about that is Roy Ram who's still with us he's ex-commander of Special Operations at Scotland Yard um, Roy maybe you could just give us a th uh, your thoughts on what happens now He's back in custody, of course, but presumably, Roy, there will be an interrogation, there will be an attempt to find out exactly what happened, whether he had help, uh, and all of that will happen before he goes back to, to prison proper. Is that is that largely what happens in these kind of things, Roy? Yeah, I would expect so, because he's obviously committed a further offence in that he's escaped from prison. So that will now be uh, an issue for the Met to investigate. So I imagine he will be in police custody uh, for some brief period of time or, uh, to allow the uh, anti-terrorist police to investigate whether, you know, as we are assuming that it was not state sponsored, that it, that he, you know, he's a, a lone operator as it were in this respect. There will be that kind of investigation to be conducted. Uh, and then it will be a matter for uh, the Home Office uh, to decide where he goes back to pending the outcome of that investigation. But I, I think probably Paddington Green is is possibly his immediate destination and uh, and an investigation questioning by the counter-terrorism police. Yeah, indeed. And actually, we'll be talking to, in just a minute, to Chris Phillips, who's former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office. But for the meantime, I want to say thank you to Roy. That's Roy Ram, who's a former commander of Specialist Operations at Scotland Yard, former very senior officer there.